So I recently met Quickie Baby in a random battle and our encounter was very interesting to say the least. He was playing the mouse, leading his team in a very dumb push towards our flank and had the following to say. Oh yeah, sweaty nerds, firing all your gold. Mouse just comes in. Come on, gamers! Yeah, yeah, whatever. Ah, oh, why? Bloody 260 farming scrub, two marks of shame. And this was the result of an earlier encounter with the Lord himself where he expressed his opinion about my first and only new account. Oh, just imagine, imagine, imagine what this play, like, I think you need to re-roll your account again. Do, re reset it again. Just reset it again. Go reset it again. Like, you, the, the shame. The shame of, of that. Like, go reset it again, dude. I mean, you kind of have to be frustrated for some reason to spend so much time stat shaming me. Well, thank you QB for motivating me on this journey of marking the object 260, and now it's time for some epic and educational gameplay. Enjoy. Whenever you are playing Cliff from the southern side, always come to the left side of the middle here for easy early game damage. Wait, he's actually double track there. Impressive. I'm gonna repush the RA gem and there's nothing to do here anymore. Because they have 5 TDs, everything is spotted and nobody's gonna peek anymore. They're running this way. It is very important to wait until you get unspotted before you push further down, simply because TDs here will otherwise be shooting you for free. As you can see, once they stop picking in the mid, crossing to this position gets you literal free damage during the entire mid game. Now we need to spot hardcore. Once the mid has been completely cleared out, you can use your turret to make some small controlled peeks into their run to line and A6. This way you will rack up a ton of spotting damage, which is exactly what you need when you want to mark a tank. There is so much spotting damage flowing in, it is really very simple since you are kind of hauled down towards them and once they fire you can just use your DPM to take them apart quickly. Really short, I'm just gonna drop, go for the i7 insta. How is that Grilla still alive is kind of beyond me though. I'm not gonna lie bro. Point three. That's good. If you get Westfield and you have no gun depression, you can easily do a lot of damage by rushing to this side of the ridge line and creating a quasi hull down situation against enemy tanks. This works even better whenever there is no enemy artillery. The only thing you have to be careful of is people like the Centurion AX rushing into the corner there. Nice. Oof, that's really lucky. Oh my brother. If you see enemy things that are peeking up on your right side, try to get a good timing and shoot them when they are vulnerable. Nice. Also wanna shoot these two guys, but it's... Wait, can we shoot the T-30? I think we can. Nice. Stacking as much view range as possible is also very important since that way you can spot out most of these in front of you whenever they fire, getting even more spotting damage for your gun mark. I'm gonna put some pressure on these two. Nice. Nice. Very nice, sweet. Titan is very stubborn, man, at aiming at me. This guy's a one shot now. But still, we need to kill the Titan. Sweet. 
I'm gonna kill him. I can go for this guy. At least I think so. He is running, dude. Today I'm gonna make it a little bit. I die? Wait. I. <laughs> wow. Okay. Ansk is a very misleading map. Most of the time, the team that wins the field will be able to reinforce the city and win the game together. Therefore, especially in encounters, I recommend you to take this corner since this will allow you to completely decimate the enemy's positions at the red line and also allows you to push and side scrape the narrow streets in front of you. Leo had a good game. I expected to be able to ram the Emil too, and I make a small mistake here and overcommit, for which I should have been punished harder. Yeah, okay, man. All the guys come back now. I realize that this 277 is slightly out of position and I move in to farm him quickly. Why are you running, boy? Another piece of golden advice for when you are going for gun marks is always try and get as many tracking shots in as possible. This also adds to your combined damage, especially on close range maps where spotting isn't really feasible. In this match, the only thing that is left for me to do is to clean up all the enemies that have ventured too far towards our spawn. On Sand River Encounter, I really like crossing instantly, since it gives you a very nice hard down position from which you can relocate and aim at a lot of different positions, giving you insane amounts of potential damage depending on the enemy's place. Dude, is there guys here? Oh, yeah. Oh. Yep, that's the only player that counters this. After guys start peeking there, you kind of have to fall back a little to not get farmed for free. What are you doing? This game is not meant to be played in 1v1, man. With that amount of RNG, dude, you will never know who's better. Oh, hi. Interesting. Interesting positions. Not entirely sure what the Progetto was thinking here. I would love if you guys could enlighten me. Once again, the funniest commenter will win a couple of thousand gold. Now that those guys are getting re-pushed by my team, this is the perfect timing for me to get back into my initial position and start farming again. Oh, already spotted. Move. Oh yeah. Uh, I wanna. I wanted to kill the already, but TVP was gonna pick me most likely. I'm gonna go on the outside. I think actually, I'm gonna go on this side. Already, already still didn't move from the same position, man. Oh, that was a very convenient drive by the Honda. I can just flank them around like completely, you know. I can even go for the 30, bro. Oh, Ison is repushing me. Bye. I don't want to. <laughs> How does that. Ah. And now this guy clips me. It's fine, 7.8. I'll take that, dude. Ever since they changed Siegfried line, this position has been great. It provides you with excellent hard down positions and also gives you the ability to support your team by shooting the lights on the field. Remember that shot, guys, because we're never gonna hit that shot ever again. <laughs> My man's in the sand, gotta die, bro. And after that, we can make big things happen, man. Big things happen, dude. They're completely out of position. What? 
But Kaizu, how could this happen? You have CCRNG on your side, you just turned it off. After clearing this side out, you need to push towards the city and try to work your way around them from corner to corner. Can I, I can pan this guy's turret with heat, no? Players. There you go, so, okay. 60p turned completely, probably surprised him. Nice. Like ever? I am sure you've noticed by now, but all these games are incredibly fast, and this is what makes getting consistent damage so hard at tier 10. And I also didn't talk much about the Object 260 in this video so far, but if you're interested in my tank review of this tank, please watch the previous video on my channel. Gotta be kidding me. Two fires in a row, dude. I recently started coming here with Haldan tanks and honestly it's been great so far. It is a much better position than the one on the upside simply because you get better angles on the enemies peeking at the rubble. Thank you. Another trick I may have shown you in the past is whenever you are aiming at any kind of armor plate and the enemy is moving, wait until their tank bumps forward a bit after stopping. This unangles their armor to the point of you having incredibly easy panic shots, even from below. Poor con. This position is also superior to the one up top simply because the enemies just tend to ignore you for some reason and give you free damage on their unangled weak spots. Nice. Oh, did it really expect to pen that with an AP through my mantlet? Since we fully cleared out that corner, it was time to push in and finish the game. And then people ask me, why do I shoot so much gold? Look at that. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what? Lot of stuff. Now you get compensated by high rolls, man. 500. It's twice in a row, dude. Easy. This is how RNG works in this game. You get shit on, then you get compensated. Nice. And now, we have approached our final game. Am I gonna be able to mark it and show Quickie Baby my third mark of shame the next time we meet? I like coming here a lot with any tank with a decent turret. It provides you with decent cover from the middle and allows you to farm unsuspecting enemies below you. It also serves as a great anti-push position from which you can deter enemy heavies from. As you can see, this tank is struggling greatly with depressing its gun, but the strong turret still prevails. Can go down, help the AMX. Oh, he's, a one, he's a one shot, but. The Badger is in a really awful counter position and it's really hard for me to actively beat the left corner since I constantly need to angle towards the Badger. Yeah. 
what body is this paid actor? Bloody 260 farming scrub, two box of shame. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button. It helps me a lot as a content creator and thank you guys for reaching 40,000 subs. You're absolutely insane and I'm very grateful to each and every single one of you that are watching my videos and are part of this community. Big things ahead, if you reach 50,000, I will make a video that is guaranteed to give you an unforgettable experience. Come on.